In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to use HDRI images to light your environments or to light your scenes with. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image, and it's basically an image that has the full exposure from darkest to lightest. That was shot in a very specific way to keep the full range of luminosity within that image. And you can use these special type of images within one of the lights in Redshift in order to light your scenes with. And it will basically take the lighting from the image and light your environment. So it's an extremely powerful, quick way to get very realistic, very accurate lighting from these photographs, from these images. Now, most of the time, these images come in the format as HDR or EXR. And you usually have to download them from somewhere, from some websites that offer HDRI images. Or you could shoot your own, but that requires a bit of a setup and know-how. But in this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to get images from online that you can use as HDR images, connect them to a light, and quickly light your scene. Here I have a scene, a very basic scene set up so we can test. These props don't have any textures, and they have a flat Lambert shader applied to them. But this will be enough for us to test things out. So the one light that you can input an HDR or EXR image into in order to light your scene, your environment with, is going to be your dome light. So if you go to the Redshift tab and you left click on this icon right here, create dome light, this will create a dome light. So I'm going to just pull it forward to show you and I'm going to resize it to make it bigger so I can find it inside the scene a lot easier because it comes in very small and the scale of my scene is slightly bigger. So again, this will not affect any intensities or anything for the light, just makes it bigger inside the scene itself. So in order to adjust properties for this dome light, you have to go into the attribute editor, open that up, and with the light selected, you have a set of properties here that you can use. The one property that you can input an HDR image into is the dome map right here. And you can click on this folder and assign an HDR or EXR image to light your scene with. Now, if I don't have anything plugged in in here and I go ahead and render, this will basically use no image other than a blank white background to light my scene. So we need an actual HDR image that we can grab the light from and see it inside our environment. So let me show you how to find a few that you can use and light your scenes. So there are many sites that you can probably find in order to download your own HDR images. I'll show you two to get started and then you can explore on your own. So the first one is going to be textures.com. This site has been around for a long time. So if you go to textures.com uh, and you go to the library tab, you're going to have right here uh, HDR spheres. And you can look through different HDR images and download them and then use them to input into your dome light. So you can look through here, find the one that you want. So for example, uh, let's say I like this one. Take a look at what it looks like and then download this one right here, 32-bit EXR. Now you do not want to use a JPEG as your input into the dome map. You have to use an EXR or HDR. So you would download one of these. The other site is Polyhaven. This is another site that's been around for a while and used to be called HDRI Haven. But now they're offering a bit more uh, content such as textures and models. So they changed their name. And this site is fantastic. There's so many HDR images you can use. So if you go here, you can go to Assets, HDRIs, and you can just browse through hundreds of different images to download. So for example, let's say uh, we'll go Outdoors, just find the one you'd want to use. And then you can download as HDR or EXR. Now, the format doesn't matter. Both will work. And if there's an option, I tend to go with HDR, but it really doesn't matter. So once you've downloaded your images and you have something that you'd want to use, then you can go ahead and plug them into the dome map parameters into the dome light itself. So let's do that next. Back in Maya, go ahead and uh, make sure you have your dome light selected. Then go to the attribute editor under dome map property. Go ahead, click on this folder and navigate wherever your images are. Usually you would place all of these images into the source images folder of your project, but really it doesn't matter. You can navigate anywhere in your computer and then insert them into the dome map property. So here I have a bunch that I collected and I can use any of these as my image based lighting to light that little small scene. So I'm just gonna go through and just choose one. It doesn't really matter which one I use. Let's say this one, go ahead, double click, assign it, and that's it, you are set. When you render, 
you will use that image as your lighting. Let's go ahead and enable IPR so I can navigate around the scene and just take a look. So now you can see that this image is being used as lighting. It has cast shadows, it has global illumination, some bounce light that's heading uh, into the indirect light areas and it looks pretty nice. And we even have the dome map image show up in our viewport as well. So let me maybe uh, uh, use a different one, some other lighting situation. So I'm just gonna go into the folder again, bring that same menu up and let's choose something a little bit more interesting than a daytime scene. Let's do this, assign it. And now it's rendering with that image. Very accurate, very beautiful, and very fast. Just one image and you are lighting your environment. Now you do have a few properties that I wanna go over. Now I'm not gonna go over every single one, just enough for you to get started. And you really don't need a lot to go through in order to start using. As is right now, it's already looking pretty good without doing anything else. So the few properties are, you can actually take your light and you can rotate it. And this will adjust the lighting inside your scene. And uh, because this image has a light source, think of it as a directional light. It's actually pointing down and if you rotate it, it affects the lighting where the shadows come from and where the direction of the light is hitting. And you also see that image is being rotated as well. If you don't want to rotate the light, you have a property to flip horizontal, just basically flips the light to the other uh, direction, 180. You can turn the light on or off. This is useful for some testing purposes if you have some other standard lights inside the scene. Uh, you have the ability to change the map type, just basically changes the projection of the image itself. So like if I look at it, if I change this from spherical to uh, something else, just changes how that image is being projected and also changes how the light is going to uh, affect the scene. And you have one more. So it just gives you a different uh, variety to choose which one you want. So I usually stick with spherical. I don't tend to change this much. Now you also have gamma, exposure, hue, saturation, and tint. Just the uh, ability to control to add some color. If you wanted to add more color into the scene, kind of some artistic purposes, you can do that. Maybe adjust the saturation. Make it desaturated, more saturated, add the hue, uh, increase the exposure, make it brighter or darker. And then you have gamma, which basically if you turn this to zero, it will go back as if you did not have a dome map applied on here and a value of one, just basically affects as the default scene. So a few useful parameters. Now one value here, if you scroll down, of course you have your shadow, you can enable disable shadows. Not sure if uh, you would want to do that, but you do have this control just like you do for the other standard lights we covered. And then one property that is useful is the environment tab, and you can enable and disable that HDR image in the background. So sometimes you may want to turn this off, but still have the light affect the scene. So if I turn this off, I won't see the background image, but I still use the light from that image. Now, most of the time, as you can see, as soon as I plugged in the image into the dome map parameter, it worked right away and I'm good to go. But sometimes, depending on the HDR image you're using, you may need to adjust the exposure settings, especially if it comes in way too dark. So for example, if I go back to textures.com, there was one HDR image I recently downloaded that came in way too dark. And it was inside indoor HDR and it was this one right here. If I click on it and take a look at the preview, here's the EXR that I would download to use as my HDR image. But the default parameter for it, the default kind of values, the exposure of it is way too dark. And then if I use the default values, the scene is not gonna be lit how it's supposed to. So if I go back, let me show you. I'm gonna load that image up and uh, just let me find it first. It's this one right here. And you can see it's uh, way too dark. So if I go ahead and apply it, it comes in underexposed. So in order to fix this, if you ever download those images that are coming in way too underexposed, just increase the exposure value to a number that matches to what you would want from that image. So if I go up to one, not enough. Let's go up to maybe three. I think kind of there. I think a value of five. I think that's way too much. I think, yeah, five, I think five was right. So sometimes you may need to increase 
the exposure or maybe decrease the exposure depending on kind of the default exposure level for that image. So HDR images are a fantastic quick way to get very realistic lighting to start lighting your environments, lighting your scenes using Redshift with Maya.